Joel chapter number 2. Joel chapter number 2. Verse 27 to verse number 29. Joel chapter number 2. Verse 27 to verse number 29. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. And that I am the Lord your God. And none else and my people shall never be ashamed. You will never be ashamed whatever has been prepared to bring you shame god will turn it around for your life over your children you will not know shame in the name of jesus verse 28 and it shall come to pass afterward that i will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy your old men shall dream dreams your young men shall see visions and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will outpour out my spirit. May the Lord bring this word to pass in our lives. This month has been captioned a month of great outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Great outpouring of the Holy Spirit. We have been considering in our midweeks the Holy Spirit and the believer where we looked into what is the relationship between the believer and the Holy Ghost. The understanding of this relationship is important for our manifestation. What you don't know you have, you cannot fully use well. What you don't know you have, you cannot properly maximize. And today I want to share with us 10 things that the Bible says about the Holy Spirit. Now the essence of this is to be able to properly and more push us and create a desire in us for this promise of the father the bible says that it shall come to pass that even in the last days i will pour out my spirit i was sharing this over and over that there is no problem with god pouring but god is looking for containers in second kings chapter 4 when the woman had oil and she had jars that were empty as long as the jars were empty, there was oil that can flow. And as she was pouring, the jars were filled. The moment she said, bring me empty jar, and they said, there is none, the oil stopped. And I saw by revelation that where there is no container, the flow of the oil ceases. The Holy Ghost have no problem invading anywhere, but is looking for containers. That's why the Bible made us to understand that we are called vessels, and we should be vessels unto another. We are conduit of his manifestation. We are conduit. Every child of God is a conduit through which God wants to manifest himself on the earth. God wants to show people through you how the kingdom operates. But he's looking for containers. That's why the Bible told us that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So we are the container. But if this container is not ready and not available nothing will be filled in there number one number two if the container is already full there is nothing to be filled and i did share that some people couldn't uh, um, make room for the influence of the spirit in their life because they are already full some people are full of themselves the holy ghost won't go there because he doesn't struggle for space you make space available for him he said, I stand at the door knocking. If anybody hears and open, I'm ready to come in. So ladies and gentlemen, brethren and beloved, we need to begin to live our life with the understanding of we as a vessel. Create room for the Holy Spirit in your life. Some people are full of pride. Some are full of envy. Some are full of bitterness. If you are full, nothing can fill. There is need for emptiness. That's why we must be broken. That's why it must be broken. It looks as if the Holy Ghost has gone on vacation. He has not gone nowhere. He's as ever as he was. But the problem is that there are no empty vessels that is ready to be conduit of his manifestations on the earth. But today, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, by the power of the Most High, the Lord will invade our life. Break everything that is occupying the space of God in our heart. 
in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in the days of the spirit. We are in a spirit-loaded world. Every Behind every physical manifestation, there is a spiritual operation. Behind every misbehavior, there is a spirit. The fact that you don't see spirits does not mean that they are not available. Everything in life, there is a spiritual force behind it. And that's why we can't afford to live our life without that which God has made available for us as a provision. The Holy Spirit of God is the greatest asset any believer can have. The greatest asset that God has made available for his children is the spirit that is at work in him. Our Christian work is going to be full of struggle without the Holy Spirit. Saint, we cannot truly please God without the Holy Spirit. We cannot truly do the will of God without the Holy Spirit. I'm afraid also to tell you that we may not be able to really live well on the earth with people without the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit. Because the demons in some people can destroy the life of others. <laughs> you know, I was looking at a scripture when Jesus got to his city and there was a madman called the madman of the Gadarian. This man, nobody could tame him. Nobody. In fact, the demon in him could also be affecting other people that tries to help him. Anytime they chain him, it will break. The demon was strong inside him. And I discovered that what is working in people, in other people, can affect other people's life negatively. The same way it can affect them positively. Am I making sense here? So now I began to imagine that the people that were going to him before then, they had, they had let's say they had no spirit. They were neutral. They didn't have a spirit that is higher than the one that was in the man. But Jesus one day was passing by on his own. He was just going. <laughs> but the Holy Ghost in him harassed the demon in the man. That the, the man that nobody could tame walked by himself. You know, there are realms in the spirit. And power past power. When one power see another, they, well, you know, there are kings also are in level. There are kings that greet kings. Oh. <laughs> so kings will greet kings. They are all kings, but there is rank. So the demon in that man now pushed the man to go meet Jesus. And he said, ah, yes, I've come to worship you. Nobody could tame him, but when he saw a higher spirit, he recognized that this one is higher than me. Now I discover that sometimes in life, some of the frictions we see in the journey is because the spirit at work in some of us is tormenting the demon at work in some people. So they can't like you. And don't expect them to like you. So the, the spirit at work in Jesus made that demon to be uncomfortable and that was how jesus sent him out and the bible says and the man was in his right mind so that man had a right life but something was misruling his life and he has affected other people's life until he had one encounter with the genuine spirit of god. i am praying for us today that the lord will overload us with the spirit and everywhere we go from now anything that is contrary to that of god will jet out of there Whatever affects others negatively will not be able to affect us. In the mighty name of Jesus. Say Holy Spirit, my life is available. Invade me and take me over permanently. In the name of Jesus. Come and say one loud amen on that if you believe. So we are conduit of the spirit. It is the work of the spirit in us that makes us to be able to do the will of the father. Romans chapter 8 verse number 9 But ye are not in the flesh but in the spirit and Therefore if so that the spirit of God dwells in you Now if any man have not the spirit of Christ He is none of his You are not in the flesh sir You are not a product of the flesh when we were born again, we were born again of the spirit. We are product of the spirit. Therefore, we can't afford to be living our life in line with the flesh. Look at that same scripture in Amplified Version. Romans chapter number 8, verse number 9. In Amplified Version. He said, however, you are not living the life of the flesh. You are living the life of the spirit. If the Holy Spirit of God really, really, really dwells within you, 
is directing and controlling you but if anyone does not possess the holy spirit of christ he is none of his he does not belong to christ look at the conclusion he is not truly a child of god he is not really a child of god so a major proof of our being a child of god is not just our ability to be in church or to dress like christian or like i didn't see that one <laughs> or anything thank you sir but the spirit some people look like christian but when they manifest you will open your mouth and say he said but they that if the spirit truly dwells is if we eat if it's not there we are not truly a child of god so if we truly wants to be children of god this is the secret the holy spirit life is not to, the truth of the matter is that it's not easy to please god you know why we are carnal people we are carnal we are flesh if our god himself had to conclude he said my spirit will no more strive with man because this one is just flesh if i continue to align he will be creating a dick and then god said i know what to do i won't strive with him but i will help him he now made provision for the holy spirit to help us are you getting me now it wasn't because jesus couldn't fight it wasn't because Jesus couldn't curse the people as they were mistreating him but it was the holy spirit church we need this holy spirit to help us and that's why we must yield to him without the holy spirit your carnal nature will rule your life and it can make you misbehave because life is full of you you don't always just expect that people will be good to you it's not natural in life like that that people will just be good that's why when people see good people they will like ah, are there still people like this in the world do you know the reason why it's not common because we live in such a world look at that scripture they told us that we live under the power of darkness that devil is the ruler of this world now he doesn't rule well can i shock you if you have a land you don't need to plant anything there before something begins to grow do you know what grows there what you don't need it is natural but if you want to eat pineapple what do you do you must plant it that's why you have to take effort to do good to do evil is like hey <laughs> you don't need to train a child to lie to start lying it just come as it's growing those the negativities of life is like normal but if we want the positivity we must embrace the spirit am i making sense here that's why it looks like if some people are born again but the lifestyle is against the born because why is that this is what will help us we are still man oh. even those of us with the microphone here we are, we are man we are man oh. but what is helping us is the spirit that sometimes i feel like slapping somebody because of provocation but we are still man i, I, I didn't say i slap oh. i said i feel like Everybody feel like doing something. But something will now come to you say, I like bah. And help you. We, Bible says, even Jesus said, when he was praying, he says, can you not let me go through this thing, sir? Because the man in him showed up at that time. But the spirit of God helped him. Oh, Lord, help us today. So we need this spirit. I'm trying to let you know that this is the thing you need. There are some things you hear in this world that make you say, let me go and join them. After all this good thing you have been doing, self thing didn't work. Let's be shitting people. And we all go to hell. <laughs> That's how some things will be ministering to people's mind. I say you have been doing well all this while. All this well, well, well you are doing, self. What has he brought you? Do what others are doing. The thing is whispering, ministering. You will dream, dream, you will see the same thing. Because the devil knows how to feed our mind. That canal part, he knows what to do to him. But this spirit part, we need help. It is the spirit of God that can help us to live in this world. And I pray today in the name of Jesus, where the devil wants to rule us, the Holy Ghost will not permit. I said the Holy Ghost will not permit. In the mighty name of Jesus. So when you see people misbehaving, it's not because they are wicked. Sometimes it's their carnal nature. Pray for them. If 
anyone have not this spirit, he is not truly a child of God. And he said he must dwell. So we must take conscious effort to allow the Holy Spirit to control our life. Will provocation come? Yes. Will things happen? Yes. But the Holy Spirit is the greatest asset that God has given the believer. One of the greatest places we can have an understanding of his operation is in the Bible. The word of God. Whatever God's word has said concerning anything is the final. Let's take our time and look briefly. Ten things among every other thing that the Bible says about the Holy Spirit. Genesis chapter number 1 verse 1 to 2. Genesis chapter number 1. Let's start from Genesis. What the Bible says about the Holy Spirit. So we saw that even from the beginning, the Holy Spirit had been at work. From the beginning, the Holy Spirit had been at work. Genesis 1 verse 1 to 2. And in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form. Look at that. And void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved. Somebody say moved. You see? So from the beginning, the Spirit of God had been at work. The Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, had been at work even from the beginning of creation. And I saw that the Holy Spirit was a principal force in the making of the world. He was at work when God was working. I believe also that some things will not properly work in our life if the Holy Spirit is not working. Some things we desire to do well, we won't be able to do well if the Holy Spirit is not working. And then as God began to speak, the Holy Spirit began to work. It was in operation. So from the beginning, I want you to understand this very clearly, ladies and gentlemen, that the Holy Spirit was a principal force in the creation of the world. If it was needed to create this world, we will need him to maintain it. We will need him to maintain it. Psalm 104 verse 30. Look at that. Psalm 104 verse 30. Thou sendest forth thy spirit. They are created. Thou sendest forth thy spirit. They are created. And thou renewest the face of the earth. So the Holy Spirit was the principal force at work in creation. Some things will never work without the Holy Spirit at work. Can let, let, us know, let us look at the Amplified Version of that. So what is this to let us note? That God needed the Holy Spirit in the beginning to make things happen. To get some dimensions of result that is not common to man. The same thing we need. You send out your spirit. They are created. They are, so all we saw created, there was a spiritual force behind the creation. So number one thing I want you to note about what the Bible says about the Holy Spirit is that he is important in the full manifestation of our life. If it was needed to create, it would be needed to maintain. Whatever serves as a raw material for making something is important for maintaining it. You send out your spirit, they are created. And as a result of that, the face of the earth was renewed. Saint, we must begin to pant after the personality of the Holy Spirit so that we can fully and successfully live well in this world. Number two thing I want to show you about what the Bible says about the Holy Spirit is in Job chapter 33 and verse number 4. Job chapter 33, we are looking at the scripture to identify some of the things that the Bible says about the Holy Spirit to further help us and position us to enjoy fellowship with this Spirit of God. Somebody say Amen. Job 33 and verse number 4. Job 33 and verse number 4. The Spirit of God has made me. Aha. Uh -huh. And the breath of the Almighty gives me life, which inspires me. Can you see that? The Spirit of the Lord had made me. So we didn't make ourselves. We are not a product of carnality, sir. Genesis chapter 2, verse number 7. And God breathed into man and he became a living being. He became a living being. So in the scripture, we saw that the whole world was formed out of the spirit. 
Even we as children of God, we were created or made or formed by the spirit. So I have concluded I am spirit made. I'm not China made. Neither am I Abba made. Spirit made. Glory to God. This is very revelational. The spirit of God has made me. The devil didn't make me. You have no control over me. The spirit of God has made my children. They can't live for the world. The spirit of God. If he's the one that makes it, then he should run it. The same thing I said earlier. Whatever was used to make something is important to maintain it. Thank you. So the Holy Spirit is a life maker. It was the force at work even in the making of our life. We are product of the Spirit. We should therefore manifest in this dimension of the Spirit. Our life should show some traces of the Spirit. That we have the Holy Spirit. If the Spirit of God has made me, then my life should show that it was the Spirit of God that made me. Am I making sense here? I'm going to say some things that may not look well to some people, but that is the reality. Because in the few times I've met with some people, they seem to like accept some negative attitude as if it is, um, um, let me use the right word here, it is like lineage based or, or city based. Or like it is, it is their village base. That people that come from this kind of place, this is how their life is always, they are, they are always angry. They are always duping people. And some people will now begin to accept it that you don't know where I'm coming from. I'm from... No, you are not from there. You chose to accept it. The Spirit of God has made me. So don't excuse some negative attitude because of where you came from. It may be paramount among the people. But somebody started it. And there is a spirit behind it. So but for you now to not accept it, say, you know, you married from that country. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> if, if it is negative, it is not good. So don't excuse it. That's why even when we now come to God, we should drop some things and change. The Spirit of God has made me. You are a product of the Spirit. Let your life reflect the Spirit. Let your utterance reflect the Spirit. Don't excuse negative attributes because of the place where you come from. This is America. But the fact that we are in America doesn't mean we should lose eternity. You understand that? I saw an article this week and they began to name the worst country in the world to raise a child. Guess number one. It's there, it's online, you can check it. The worst country to raise a child. But the truth of the matter is that the Spirit of God has made us. And even in it, we can still raise a child well. Now somebody will not hide under that and say, well, you know, it's the worst country to raise a child. So if the child is not raised well, we are in a country that is worst. You must know where you are from and what you are made of. That's what, is there some things there? You know, I, do, is it, some people don't know what they are doing for their children. As in very good, they don't know. Yesterday we were here, and one of us brought our two daughters. And then they came to me in the office as well. We entered the office. He said, Pastor Daddy. <laughs> I don't, maybe that lady is six years old, might be five. He said, My mommy said that it's not good to spoil the child. <laughs> he said, because he doesn't want us to be spoiled. I did ask her question. She just began. He said, because she doesn't want us to be spoiled, she disciplines us. In my heart, I was like, ah. so the girl knows that uh, this discipline thing is to help her. She's just like six years. Then I now left her and I began to meditate on the words. Hey. So those little, little things the mother was telling them is, mass, is making sense in their hair. But I now like the way the mother put it, that she was able to communicate to them and not just be whooping them without them understanding the justification are you getting what i'm saying i didn't even tell you bread. but in my heart i was like so the bed know that if you do something here and <laughs> you are wrong you're going to be disciplined and the reason why you are disciplined is because they don't want you to be spoiled so she knew so i want you to understand that we must know where we are from don't 
bite under these negative things and miss what we are from. The Spirit of God has made us. We must transfer this to our children. We must transfer this to our home. We are product of the Spirit. The Bible also told us to help us. He said, no, we live in the world, but we are not of the world. So there is a difference in the way we live our life. Our priorities must be different. May the Lord help us. Say louder, amen, if you believe. So number two thing the Bible told us about the Holy Spirit is the fact that we are made by the Spirit and the breath of the Almighty has given us life. Number three, Isaiah chapter 11 and verse number two. Isaiah chapter 11 and verse number two. We need to ensure that the fear of God is not something that we negotiate no matter the kind of world we live. Because at the end of all that we are doing, there is eternity. And we are all going to live and give a report. Praise the Lord. Isaiah 11 verse 2. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom. The spirit of understanding. The spirit of counsel. The spirit of strength. The spirit of knowledge. And the fear of the Lord. These are dimensions of the spirit. So the Bible shows us here that the manifestation of the Holy Spirit is multidimensional. When the Holy Spirit is in operation, these things um, should show. Most importantly, we can't claim to fear God and we are not living a life that shows the fruit of it. So the Spirit of the Lord will rest upon him. These are the dimensions of the operations of this Spirit. The spirit of counsel, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of strength, the spirit of knowledge. So we are not limited because we have the Holy Spirit. Because we have the Holy Spirit is not an excuse for us to be lazy. It's the spirit of strength. Because we have the Holy Spirit or because we are spirit people doesn't mean that we should not be intellectually sound. It is the spirit of wisdom. So the Holy Spirit at work in the believer should not put the believer at a disadvantage. Rather, the Holy Ghost should put us at advantage. So we discover here from scripture that the Spirit of God operates in multi-dimensional ways. It's the spirit of wisdom. It's the spirit of counsel. It's the spirit of strength. It's the spirit of knowledge. And more importantly, the fear of God. The fear of God. Number four, what the Bible says about the Holy Spirit. Romans chapter number five and verse number five. Romans chapter number five and verse number five. I want us to challenge ourselves that the operations of the Holy Spirit in my life should advance me even in this present world. The Holy Spirit. Romans five verse five. The Bible says such hope in God's promise never disappoint us. Because God's love has been abundantly poured out within our heart. How? How? Through the Holy Spirit. So you know what the scripture is showing us? That it is the Holy Spirit that helps us to love. God's love is shed abroad. Can you give the uh, King James version of this one? God's love is shed abroad in our heart. This one talks about abundantly poured and the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit which is given unto us. So the Holy Spirit that God gave unto us is to enhance our ability to love. Saint, when you see that human nature of you struggling to be bitter, struggling with hatred, ask the Holy Spirit to help. He's the one given by the Father to help us to love. The Holy Spirit empowers us to be able to walk in love and demonstrates the love of God, both to God and to humanity. We need the Holy Spirit. It's our love booster. Help me to love. It's the one that helps us because that is one of his assignments. He has been shared abroad in our heart to be able to express the love of the Father. Today, in the name of Jesus, may the Lord release and pour his spirit upon us more than ever before. Number five, what does the Bible say about the Holy Spirit? Isaiah 63, verse number 10. Isaiah 63, verse number 10. 
And this is more important as we look at all these scriptures to begin to see the things that the Holy Spirit have been released to make happen in our life. Now this is very important and I want us to look at it. Isaiah chapter number 63 and verse number 10. Look at that. It said, but they rebelled and first is Holy Spirit. Therefore, he turned to be their enemy. And he fought against them. Remember that the Bible says that God forgives every sin, but the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit is one of the things I wouldn't forget. It. Then as I was studying, I saw this scripture. I said, they rebelled or rebelled and vest is Holy Spirit. That word vest there is my concern. The vest is Holy Spirit. Now give me the amplified version. Let's look at that together. Because what happens eventually was that this spirit that's supposed to be an helper now became an enemy. They rebelled and grieved the Holy Spirit. Grief is still deep. Go look for all the version and find me an English one that is easy. Just look around. I think a New Living Translation or Message version. So we can also at least discover there that there is something you do to the Holy Spirit that makes him turn. I discovered saying that the way we relate with the Holy Spirit will influence the way he will relate with us. The way we relate with the Holy Spirit affects the way he will either draw close to us or maintain his place from us. They grieved his Holy Spirit. He changed into their enemy. Fought against them. Fought against them. Remember that there are certain things in scriptures. Men may not like it, but that is the personality of God. He's a God of love. He's also a God of judgment. And this Bible told us that there are some set of people that the Lord will resist. God gives more grace to the humble, but he resists the proud. And I said, if God is the one resisting you, no prayer can assist you. I mean, is it not the same one that will answer the prayer? It is only mercy and change. Was it not the same God that raised Saul that brought him down? If you don't maintain your place with God, he will replace you. He said he, he resists the proud. So there is something that man will embrace that will make God to turn his back. Pride is one of them. And this is also one of the things that grieves the Holy Spirit. Message version, message, new living translation. Can somebody help me look around, look on your phone. I want us to look at this word grieved first in simple terms. Of course we know what it means to provoke, to offend, to do evil against. But the Bible is showing here that they rebelled. The, the word rebellion is in the category of witchcraft. That's what scripture says. Rebellion is in the category of witchcraft. Uh -huh. They grieved this Holy Spirit. He turned. He became their enemy. Ah. May God for fight us. Yeah, you are not here. The rebel, rebellion is dangerous. Rebellion. Rebellion is demonic. Don't gang up with people to rebel against the agenda of God. We can ask Datan and all the category. A death that had never been died by anybody before. We never knew that this heart can open. We didn't know the heart is even hungry. Swallow them and they are true. Rebellion is dangerous. Don't let anybody bring you into a carcass of evil doer. Don't. You see, I've shared this with you over and over again. If, you, if your phone is available for gossiping, you are too free. You need job. And I can hire you. I can hire you. Do you know why? Because it could be dangerous. This thing that the rebellion of Dayton Quran, somebody started it. Brought all other people in. And then, how many people died? God didn't ask who started it. Especially in the house of God. This is one of the reasons why many people are in church, but God no recognized them. 
they lift up holy hands and they are the same kind of people that gathers to do secret meetings. Eight pastor, eight the pastor's wife, eight the minister. And then they would display people's life and after that they would come and greet you on Sunday. Do you know one of the funniest things I've discovered in my little life? The people you are meeting together, they are coming to tell us. In case you don't know. I've shared this with you. If you see to gossip others, they will go that together again and gossip you. It is not an evidence of the spirit. It's the human nature. But if you struggle with it, deal with it before it becomes this. They grieved his Holy Spirit. It became their enemy and he fought against them. So I saw in scripture that this Holy Spirit is not just an helper. He's also a fighter. He's a fighter. There is tendency for some of these things to well up because of the human nature. But let the Spirit help you to be able to overthrow it. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, every hold of rebellion, we frustrate it now. The Lord will not fight against us, but he will fight for us. Romans chapter 8 verse number 11, number 6, what does the Bible say about the Holy Spirit? Romans chapter 8 verse number 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit. He quickens it. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken. Romans 8, 11. So we saw there that the Holy Spirit is a life quickener. He quickens our life. He quickens. He helps us to live to be strengthened. So when you are weak, there is somebody to call. The Holy Spirit. He quickens our bodies. He charges us up. The word quicken means to charge. No, your body cannot be weak. So we have a doctor in the spirit. It's the Holy Spirit. If he could raise the dead, he could revive your bones. Ha! Shano katahadia. If he could raise Christ after three days, that which the doctor said is weak in you, he can charge it. Shadaka Lupradia. You see, the Spirit of God is the maker of all. And if He's the maker of all, He knows the right button to press. We need to start building a life that is connected to the Spirit. Number seven, what the Bible says about the Holy Spirit, Act of Apostles, chapter 1, verse number 8. Act 1, verse 8. Act 1, verse 8. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me. Both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and all to the uttermost part of the earth. So the Holy Spirit is a conduit of God's power. If we want to operate in God's power, we need the Holy Spirit. And we need power so that they will not, we will not be overpowered in this world. We live in a power-loaded world. And the Holy Spirit is the channel that which God's power is transmitted. But do you now see that after this come upon you, he said, and ye shall be. So the essence of power is not for decoration. The essence of power is not just for impression or to oppress people. The essence of power is for impact. And ye shall be my witness to tell people about me. So God empowers us so that we can impact people's life. God gives us graces and gifts so that we can affect people's life positively. So the Holy Spirit wants to walk through us to reach people. He wants to walk through us to affect life. The conduit of power is the Holy Spirit. So the more the operations of the Holy Spirit, the greater the dimensions of his power in our life. Number eight, what does the Bible say about the Holy Spirit? Galatians chapter number five. Verse number 17. Galatians chapter number 5 and verse number 17. The Bible says that for the sinful nature has its desire which is opposed to the spirit. And the desire of the spirit is opposed to the sinful nature. For these two, the sinful nature that is our carnal person and the spirit, they are in direct opposition to each other. He said, there is continually in conflict. So, our flesh is always fighting the spirit. 
He said, this conflict is heavy that even you as believers, can you see here? You do not always do what is good that you want to do. Ah, ah but somebody has said, I won't do this anymore. And it is that day that he said, I won't do it. That that thing will not take over the person. Do you know what? There is a fight. He said, this carnal flesh is in continual conflict. The unfortunate part is that this battle doesn't have a referee. So they are fighting. The spirit is saying, no, you will do the will of God. The carnal nature is saying, no, you won't do it. I said, don't do it. And then he said, the victim is the believer. That you will not always do what you want to do. What is the way out? Verse 17. Next verse. Come on now. But if you are guided and led by the spirit, not subjected to the Lord. Next verse. Now, the practice of the sinful nature are clearly evident. So this is, this is how the sinful nature operates. Immorality, impurity, sensuality, lack of self-control. Continue, we are going somewhere. Idolatry, sorcery, hostility, strife. So when you see all these things, God is telling you that it's, your, it's not the spirit of God. It's this canon thing that is tearing your life. Drunkenness, heavy righteous living other things like this he said just as i've warned you those who practice such things will not do what Amen. so this thing can take you away from the kingdom of god next verse he said but the spirit when the spirit is the one these are the fruit the result of his presence within us can you see how do i know if my life is being run by the spirit this is your report card is what number one talk to me love he said it is unselfish concern for others so when you love people you don't talk bad about them when you love people you don't look for their downfall this is the report card of the spirit number two joy inner peace patience go back there you miss something go back there verse 22 he said ability to wait not just the ability to wait but how we act while oh lord i love this one so he said patience is not just your ability to wait but you say you are waiting but you are grumbling he said no he said patience is even the way you are acting while you are waiting those are the element of patience so you want to test somebody's patience as the people will say when they shook you will you give them up a good he said your acting when you are patient is also an indication that you are patient kindness goodness faithfulness now how many of you can tell me that that one is easy that even you it doesn't matter who born you even if your father is a lay bishop that they will push you punch you punch you you have given them warning hey hey you are, you are pushing me and then they still push you. And the Bible says if they slap you on the right one, he said you should turn the other one. Even you that I'm looking here, will you do that one? But it is doable. Only by the Holy Spirit. Do you know what the Holy Spirit will do? At that moment, it will make your carnal nature to be suppressed. That's why people will now look at you and say you are a godable person. You are a momentous entity. It is not because you are momentous, but the reason is because there is something controlling your life. I always tell people that where I'm going, you are not going there. So I'm going to allow you to stop me. What you are seeing, I'm not seeing it. I have a lot of things to lose if I allow you. Because it took me time to build. <laughs> they taught me where the man that wears white doesn't go and play palongo where they are selling So I watch who I hang around and I watch what I listen to. <laughs> because you can spoil somebody's joy a whole day by just one word. Just one phone call can destroy the whole of the day. He says, sir, have you heard somebody say something about you? We are in the world. They must talk. If even people are dying, they are still talking about them. But the water is this. I check myself. Because I'm, I'm, I am I'm accountable. And there is a judgment at the end of the day. 
So if you are too concerned that people talk about you, it's as a result that you are not doing anything, either good or bad. Especially good. But there is this that shows us about the spirit. Gentleness, self-control. So when you feel like something wants you to do something, there is an ability to say, no, I press the brake. That is self-control. It's self, self-control. It is by the help of the spirit. And the Bible says, against this, there is no law. May the Lord give us grace. So where the Holy Spirit is walking, these things will be showing. Walk in the Spirit, the Bible says, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. So the flesh has desire, but it says walk in the Spirit, walk in the Spirit. So when you begin to see that your life is drawing towards these negative things, you are reacting unnecessarily, you are jealous, you are angry, you are bitter. God is telling you something. The carnal person is owing you. Walk in the Spirit. What does it mean to walk in the spirit? Be intentional. Because nobody walks unintentionally. If you want to walk, you must rise. So to walk in the spirit is not just a word. It means that number one, take responsibility for your spiritual state. Every time. To walk in the spirit means that you, you choose to walk away from that thing. And do something that will steer your spirit into order. Am I making sense here? Walk in the spirit also means that you embrace a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Embrace a relationship that will help your spirit to be healthy. Walk in the spirit. Saint, our way out to deal with our carnal flesh and the whole negativity in this world is to walk in the spirit. May the Lord give us grace. Say amen louder if you believe. Number 9, Ephesians chapter 3 verse number 16. We're rounding up. Ephesians chapter 3 verse number 16. Bible says, may he grant you out of the riches of his glory to be strengthened and spiritually energized hmm, with power through his Holy Spirit in your inner self that is indwelling your innermost being and personality. So the Holy Spirit is the one that strengthens us. We can't be strengthened by ourselves without the Holy Spirit at work life and finally number 10 is luke chapter 11 verse number 13 luke chapter 11 verse number 13 the bible says if you then being evil knows how to give good gift you that are sinful by nature see what i was talking about know how to give good gifts to your children how much more will your heavenly father give the holy spirit to who those that what and continue continue always ask holy spirit help me holy spirit i need you you see when it becomes your greatest confidant life will become easy things you naturally react to before you just suddenly even yourself you will tell yourself ah i have changed you <laughs> i say nobody will now be telling you you are the one that will look at your life and say ah <laughs> me i've changed you and you'll be laughing at yourself and be telling yourself if it were to be uh -huh. When I was still in the can, that was called Jean. I know what I would have done. What has changed you is the Spirit of God. And that is what his work is. To make us more heavenly positioned and utterly distant in the negative. Heavenly positioned. Saint of God, beloved and believers, we need to embrace close fellowship with the Holy Spirit if we truly want to reign with God. If we truly want to live well among ourselves, if we want to fulfill the purpose of God, if we don't want the devil to gain our life, if we truly want to ensure that eternity we are going is in heaven and not hell, we need the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit to do the will of God. Let's rise on our feet as we pray. We have looked at so many things in the midweek. What the Holy Ghost will do for a believer, it will guide the believer. It will defend the believer and many more things that the Holy Spirit does. But the Bible shows us that God is willing to give his spirit to those who ask. Those who ask. Those who ask. There is an asking that is important. What do you need? Do you need comfort? Ask the Holy Spirit. Do you need power? Ask him. You need a change of life? Ask. And I want you to begin to talk to the Lord. Father, thank you for the provision of your Holy Spirit.
I want you to talk to the Lord. There is so much that God has shared with us today. There is so much that the Lord has opened the heavens for us to receive today. And I want you to begin to ask him, Father, I ask today for a major pouring of your spirit upon my life. I want to be who you have ordained me to be. I want to live triumphantly over and over the works of the devil. I want to live a triumphant life. I want to live my life to fulfill, to, to, to fear God, to fulfill your will. Holy Spirit, help me, help me, help me. Maybe there are some character deficiencies. Ask him, ask him. I need a change of life. Deliver me from my carnal nature. Deliver me from my carnal self. Holy Spirit, I need more of you. All over my life. I just want you to take over me. Rule my heart. Rule my life. Rule my thought. Rule the way I live. The way I relate with God. The way I relate with man. I want you. I surrender all to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Abansandala katala baragadaba. Do you know this song? Fill me up, Lord. You provide a fire. I'll provide a sacrifice. You provide a spirit. I will open up inside. Fill me up, Lord. Fill me up, Lord. Fill me up, Lord. Fill me up. And that is our song today. You provide the fire, and I'll provide a sacrifice. I'll provide a sacrifice. You provide a spirit. You provide the spirit. I will open up inside. I, I will open up inside. inside. Fill me up, Lord. Fill me up, Lord. Fill me up, Lord. Fill me up. to talk to the Lord Holy Spirit I need you fill my life oh, fill my heart fill the life of my children fill my life I can't afford to just continue this way fill me up let the manifestation of the gift of the fruit of the Spirit show up in my life fill me up fill me up in such a way that my carnal nature is arrested forever anger is gone jealousy is gone envy is gone I just want to be filled up to overflow Somebody needs to pray, Holy Ghost, help my weakness, help my weakness, help my weakness, Holy Ghost, help my weakness, help my weakness. If someone is at the point where he says, I can't take this anymore, Holy Ghost, help my weakness, help my weakness. I want you to pray that I will quicken your mortal body. It will quicken your mortal body, sweating, sweat, strengthen you within, strengthen you everywhere. Holy Spirit, Shanga Talabaraba Sutatanama. Thank you, sweet Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, all we have come to do today is just to ask that you fill us, fill our heart, fill our life, fill us to overflow. Holy Spirit, we cannot do it. We cannot. But we need you. We need you to be who God has ordained us to be. We need you to do what God wants us to do. We need you to live right. We need you to make heaven. We need you to be able to showcase love. We need you to be able to showcase and express the fruit of the Spirit in our lives, our children, in our works, in the areas everywhere we face to be true representative of the kingdom of God on the earth. Holy Spirit, fill us up today, Lord. Take charge, take the will of our life. Take the will of our heart. In the name of Jesus, deliver us from our carnal self. Give us victory and triumph from every hold of carnality. In the name of Jesus, 
Thank you, Spirit, Spirit of God. Everyone at the junction of their weakness, Father, fill up. Strengthen everyone. Strengthen everyone. Strengthen everyone. Strengthen everyone. Quicken our mortal body. Holy Ghost, do what only you do in our life. In the name of Jesus Christ, enhance our sensitivity. Fill us with your gifts. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Heavenly Father. To you be the glory and the praise. In Jesus' name, the Lord, we have prayed. <laughs>